Hello fellow leggers, you are joining us in the heart of London in the West End. And we feel like the luckiest people today because you're joining us, but you're joining us here at the Prince of Wales Theatre where we are finally seeing the Book of Mormon. So stick around to find out how many stars, whether it's break a leg or leg, leg it. it. We are finally seeing the Book of Mormon. Well, we say we, I am finally seeing it. You've seen it before, you caught it very early on? I did catch it early on. I actually ca uh, caught the last ever preview of wow. this and was here on press night too, walking past and the red carpet arrivals and that was a pretty special evening actually. <laughs> and I love the show, I think it's an absolute spectacular, but what it is, is really bloody expensive. It is really expensive, which is kind of why I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but we got really lucky today because if you come two hours before Curtain Up, you can be, your num names can be drawn out of a barrel to win tickets on the front row for just 20 pounds. Just 20 pounds. And after a few times of trying, that's what we did today and we finally one front row seat, so I mean, how lucky are we? Book of Mormon, for those of you that don't know, is a bit of a smash hit. It was nine time Tony Award winning, what? four time Olivier winning, and it is a comedy sensation which okay. premiered on Broadway in 2011 and is still running there and playing sold out houses. Okay. Transferred here in 2013 and is the story of two Mormon missionaries who are sent to Uganda to preach their religion to a community of people who are more concerned about warlords, deadly pollution and AIDS, which threatens their lives on a daily basis. Which sounds pretty heavy, but it's funny. <laughs> okay, I've, I've kept away from it so far. I've not been drawn into the soundtrack, so I'm looking forward to seeing what it actually contains. Well, it's written by Trey Parker and Matt Stone, who you'll probably recognise as writers, creators of South, South Park. Park. Yes. The music is by uh, Robert Lopez, Bobby Lopez, who is Avenue Q fame and also Frozen. He he did the music for Frozen alongside his wife. He is a bit of a legend now. Um, the cast here is including Dom Simpson as Elder Price, mm -hmm. um, Jim, uh, sorry, J. Michael Finlays as Elder Cunningham, and the wonderful, I have such a soft spot for him, Stevie Webb as Elder McKinley. I saw Stevie Webb in Betwixt at the Trial Excuse Studios years ago. Um, he's gonna be perfect in this role. I am more excited about what you are gonna think of this. So, don't turn it off guys, stick around to get all of his thoughts and my thoughts for our 30 second interval breakdown. And stick around to the end to find out how many stars. Well we've come to the interval of the Book of Mormon, which means it's time for the Breaker Leggers 30, 30 second, second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. Go. Go. What do you think so far, you're new? Um, I'm really enjoying it, um, it moves so well, the characters are so funny, exactly the same as South Park, I can see exactly where the humour is coming for, from, set to the back, um, back story of like Book of Mormon, it makes everything so extreme and hilarious, I'm really liking it. How yeah, about you, Same I absolutely round. love it, I would go so far to say as it's probably my favourite long running show in the West End right now, and my god, have an ensemble ever worked so hard? It's so good. I don't know, but I'm blown away once more, I can't wait to see Well, hello, our name is Elder Leggers, and we would like to share with you the most amazing review. I think because you <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? Like, come out of left field. Inspired. Well, it, I, was it? Well, you know, I'd say it was, I am inspired, because it's a pretty inspiring show, but I'm not going to say much more. You're new to this. I'm going to let you lead, and I'm going to try and step back, because I've made my opinions on this very clear in, in the past to you personally. But not to Leggers. Not to not all to of you. Leggers. And I'm sure you fellow like, Leggers may have strong views on this show as well. I love the show, but anyway, over to you. I, I really liked it. It was really good. It is typical South Park humour. Some of it is uncomfortable at times, on PC, but hilarious and it is bold and makes really it's just, I love this idea of bold strokes, bold characters. The narrative is pretty simple but told really well. It doesn't over complicate it too much. Um, I don't know too much the Mormon religion. I feel more 
I'm more inspired. You're more educated. Now. More educated. That's all. I'm not inspired. I'm not inspired to go. And are we going to go? Are we now going to become Mormons? We are going to become Mormons. Because I don't know Mormons. if I could wear just a simple white shirt and black tie all the time. It would make you know? things a lot easier, wouldn't it? In like terms of wardrobe. Yeah, I think that's um, the point. And their magic underwear that they wear to stop them from getting magic underwear. Yeah, they wear these all in one suit. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, wrong. Maybe we've got Mormon viewers, but they wear these underwear that are that have a, a protective section over the crotch, which is supposed to protect them against sins of the flesh. Does it work? I, you'll have to ask a Mormon. <laughs> okay, comment below. Yeah. Um, but no, I really liked it. Um, as a musical, it is fabulous. It is. It's got all the dancing. It's got all it's got the all spark, the dances. All the spark. It's got all the jazz hands. Mm. It's got your tap. It's got your contemporary. It's got the hell. It's, it's it's got everything. It takes the Mickey out of everything in terms of musicals as well. Wicked in there. A lot of the Lion King in there. Yeah, even a lot the sound of, the of structure music. Structure in there in terms of the the big number at the end of the first act that has everybody singing. I mean, it, it was really good. So you enjoyed it then? Yeah, what about you then? I would agree with you in so much what you said in one itself. thing is that it has everything. It's the gold standard of musical theatre storytelling. It's funny yet it has heart. It's simple narrative but also has a strong message. <laughs> um, it's offensive, yes, but I believe that offence comes from a place of purpose. I don't think it's there to be offensive for offensive sake. It's saying, take a look at yourself, audience members. If this is offending you, isn't the plight of our fellow humans across the globe and the fact that there is this massive division of wealth between the Western world and, you know, the, un the, the undeveloped world. We don't call it the third world anymore, but but, you know, there's so much inequality and we need to start with ourselves if we're going to change our attitudes and change the world. The message here seems simple, but I think if you dig slightly beneath the sur surface, there's a really powerful, really strong show that has a massive amount to say politically. OK, I don't, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think it's offensive for offensive sake. I, I think it's controversial for controversial sake. And that's kind of what the creators thrive on that's what they get that is their niche and that is how they've become so popular across the world and what they do so the production itself is really good yes it's really strong really strong the story the music the lyrics the music there's is not a, great there's not a single number that isn't memorable and that's another great yeah. so many musicals we see i can remember one song every single song in this i think is brilliantly well crafted and it gets better alone. than the last almost yeah. so the first act Builds. i was thinking these these are three great numbers we've had are we going to suddenly dip oh no that's four great numbers we've had where's it going to go okay there's another five six and there's then another show at the end of the act. there's another big show in the west end which i'm not going to name because we might review it at some point that you haven't seen and i have seen that i believe peaks at song three okay and then it just can't get back to those dizzying heights but this doesn't happen here which is great Okay, answers on a postcard. Um, if you uh, your suggestions as to what show that may be that yeah. is currently running here in the West End, leave us a comment. Can you guess? Um, currently on at the West End, after been there for a few years, Rick. and peaks for me at song three. Now you talked about the sound of music. Yeah, um, uh, it's a nice family show. A family show. This ain't. No, it ain't no family show. I think teenagers, fifteen plus, would probably yeah. be fine with it, but I would be hesitant to bring the little leggers to this, aged Not nine a little and eleven show. as we speak. But um, but like. Like I say, because it has a good message at its heart, outside of all of the F-bombs and C-bombs in some cases. Every bomb. I, I, I think it's a teenage show. Okay. Um, so let's move on to some members of the cast. Yes. Can we please just all take a moment to bow down to the god that is Stevie Webb? I knew we're going. Was great. I knew going oh into goodness, this so that good. he was born to play Elder McKinley. You know, I, I said on the way in, this is his role, and it really is his role. The actor that originated the role here in London for this um, won an Olivier Award for that part. It's an Olivier Award-winning role. That's it the is. role. It's you, written so well. That's the role you want, really. I mean, yeah. it's crazy because it's not the lead. It's sort of third or fourth even lead, but. Um, it's just such a well-crafted and Stevie made it his own. I couldn't remember the performance that I'd seen before because Stevie is just so wonderful. I want to munch him up. He is a true triple threat, singing, dancing and um, acting 
I, the, I'm sorry. I can't wait to see what he does next. So you thought he was okay? Loved right. him. Anybody Loved else you, in the Stevie cast? Webb. <laughs> yep. Also, uh, J. Michael Finlay as Elder Cunningham, the sort of dweeby, geeky, gets things wrong a lot, lies through his teeth role. I mean, what a role. It takes a certain calibre of actor that I think was kind of... I see that character from time to time and I think ultimately it's rooted kind of in the Jack Black performance. Yes. That kind it could of be a real... Doom, yeah. Is, is that yeah, the role? In, um, in School of Rock. School of Rock. Yeah. It's that character. Also he reminds me of Barthy in 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee as well. There's that sort of a character but this is his West End debut. And he, but he does it so that actor, well. He does do it so well. I was so thinking well. oh is this going to be too much in the in the opening moments but no. He, he is so subtle and so big when it needs to be and you're on board with him and you believe everything and boy is he funny. He is so funny. His comic timing was excellent. His vocal range as well, these lovely floating ten notes and then this really meaty man up bit. Just to have that flexibility is great. Now we said Elder Price normally played by Don Simpson but we had an understudy on today um, by way of Dave Thomas Brown playing Elder Price. Um, We've it's seen him before. I couldn't believe it. I feel absolutely honoured and blessed that when we saw Heathers in 2014 at New World Stages in New York, yep. he was our JD. How about that? I never that? thought I'd see him again. And, and he's here over he here now in London in this show and he's a true leading man. I thought he was absolutely sensational. Yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. I'm almost questioning, is he is he an understudy or is he playing this role and they just haven't updated the programmes and the mm. boards yet? Is this full time? Is, is this full time? I don't know. We'll find out. Comment below. Be. Let us know because he was, he's, he's that good. Uh, yeah. yeah he, he's fantastic. And that's another point, isn't it? You go and some people, maybe you've been before and you've been a little bit disappointed that you're getting an understudy because you don't know what to expect. A change in the car and you're like mm. just give expectations you're worried they're not going to be matched I do say go with an open mind and prepare to be thrilled especially if you get this guy in that role yes he it was great. absolutely fantastic any other, other, other members of the cast I just want to bow down again to the ensemble it's it's they are, I can't they're, pull they're so out a busy. single person they're I'm so exhausted busy. I'm 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 sweating on their behalf I really the am. costume changes are insane they're pretty much in every scene but dressed as something else dressed yep. as males as well as females this that and the other I mean, it's such an intense track I imagine it must be really fun to do hard work they're a getting lot their money's of hard worth work it keep you in shape wouldn't it this show keep you fit it would keep you very very fit what a workout Individuals, I really um, enjoyed the father. So um, Richard Lloyd King as um, Mafala Hatim Hatimbi. He um, is an ex-leading cast member for a lot of shows, and also he was in the original cast of Five Guys Named Mo playing. I thought I recognised him actually. Yes, He's been around a long, long time. You can feel his experience. It jumps off the stage. So natural, so believable. And at home with the comedy, I almost sort of like, I was biting my fist a bit. Because you know when you see like an old, you know when you hear your nan swear? And you're a bit like, oh, oh. I sort of felt like that at times with the real, <laughs> with the real sort of dirty stuff that happens and those real obscenities. I thought, oh my God, there's an older man saying the C word. Oh, uh, but I loved that he owned it. He seemed to really eat that those words. I loved it. Okay. Anybody else that stood out for you? Not particularly. I just like I say, the ensemble are fantastic. And I guess we should just say big shout out to the direction and the choreographer because yep. it is ultimately down to them to have that creative vision to make it so busy and so vibrant. Absolutely. I mean the. Trey Parker co-directed it, Casey Nicklaw co-directed it and also choreographed it. Um, choreographer of Disney's Aladdin here in the West End as well, which we haven't seen, but I hear there's good dancing numbers. And it did have that feel at times, that Disney-esque style, even though it's a very adult show. Absolutely. Anyway, I guess you're probably wondering how many stars we are going to give the Book of Mormon. So, for the Book of Mormon, we are going to give... Five! The full house for this production. Like I say, if you're easily offended, stay away. If you don't like gratuitous violence and and obscenities, then stay away. You know, there's trigger moments in there, definitely violence-wise. Yes, I'd say definitely come along. It's, um, definitely, I'm saying definitely stay away and you're saying, no, no, no challenge yourself, I, I get in here. I think you should challenge yourself. I think maybe you surprise yourself, maybe come alone. Yeah. <laughs> and, just, and then and to lap it up. But it is, like I say, gold standard for me. I think that this is probably 
my favourite, as I said in the interval breakdown, current long running West End show. I just smile from ear to ear, I feel elated, I love the hearing the roar of the audience behind me, laughing, the whole row moves with laughter. I mean, how does. often does that happen in a show? My God, I had a great time. You? had a great time. I had a Did great you, time. Did you have a great time? Have you seen the show? Let us know down below. We'd love to hear from you. Because that's just what I think. Well, it's just what I think. So we are the Breaker Leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.